One of Kings Island's most forgotten attractions was the Cuddle Up. But the guests who did get to experience it from 1972 to 1976 miss it to this day. Hello, everyone. I'm Don Helbig alongside Ryan Sir, and this is Tower Topics. Tower Topics is a podcast by Kings Island fans for Kings Island fans, because that's who we are, and that's who we care about. So the Cuddle Up, Don, this is a ride I've always heard about, but was gone before I was born. Um, yeah, it was uh, one of my earliest childhood memories is riding the Cuddle Up with my sister and my mom and my dad at uh, Cincinnati's Coney Island. Um, you know, it opened there way, way back in 1930. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, was one of the rides that relocated to Kings Island for its opening in 1972. So it was kind of nice to have that familiar ride uh, that we had, you know, ridden as kids when Kings Island opened, you know, to be able to continue to do that at Kings Island. Uh, it was located what they called at that time, the Coney Island area of Kings Island. You know, today it's known as Coney Mall. Uh, the current location, it's where uh, Coney Barbecue is today. And it was manufactured by the Philadelphia Toboggan Company. Yeah, so uh, it, it's, it was where Coney Barbecue is, but to be clear, for those of you who've been around for more than a couple years, exact same building that like the rock shop and that games building was in, right? When they removed the cuddle up, I believe they renovated that building. They did, yeah. So there were different things in there. Um, thing called Fascination was in there. Mm. Uh, the soundtracks was another thing when they used to yes. uh, have that where guests could uh, record their own songs and that. So yeah, there were a lot of different uses after it left. Yeah, so uh, for so many of you have probably actually been in the building where the cuddle up stood. And uh, if you're wa if you're watching the uh, the YouTube video, the the version I'm showing on the screen is the one from Coney Island. This is a photo from Coney Island. But you were mentioning that it was identical at Kings. That's Island. a virtual replica of that in Coney Mall uh, when Kings Island first opened. And if you go into Coney Barbecue right now, I mean there are some you know, the pictures of this ride, you know, really really rare because it was indoors. Mm -hmm. are not indoors but undercover so kind of hard to find you know many photos of it i know the park archives you know very very little uh was in place for the cuddle up you might see more in on video than you do you know the still photos of it uh, but you know it was a fun ride you know it was uh you know similar to a spinning teacup ride um only the spinning teacups you know they would travel in a series of uh, tangent circles and this would create several, you know, like near misses, you know, with the moments as the cars passed each other. But just just a lot of fun, you know, especially if, you know, when, you, when you're younger and, and, you know, you, you love spending at that age, you know, when you get older like we are now, Ryan, maybe not so much fun. But uh, back then it was just a blast to ride them. I can totally still spin like a champion. I'm not that old yet, but I'm getting there. Uh, so it, it first opened at Cincinnati's Coney Island in 1930. Uh, it shared the same building with the Dodgem uh and the whip at that yeah park. at coney island right right uh but only the dodgem was relocated to king's island uh and it's ironic yeah, because the dodgem moved i believe but it's located close to where this ride was now yeah the dodgem yeah it was relocated in uh, 1986 refurbished you know so they've always had a dodgem at king's island that always brings up a little bit of you know when you say original park rides and that you know some will point that no in 1986 was a totally new dodgem and that um but yeah i mean the dodgem that they originally had you know was right next to the cuddle up uh but that was you know it, it was we really reminded guests of, of of coney island you know when they came into the coney island area of king's island at the time and you had all those little midway attractions you know the scrambler the monster you know the rides that had been at coney island yeah so uh the last season was 1976 and then in 1977, it was replaced with Fascination, a competitive midway game. This is the point in the show where Don's going to explain to me what Fascination, a competitive midway game was. I didn't uh, play the games. I was too interested in riding the rides at that time. You know, that was the one big thing we did every summer. Mm -hmm. So my time was going to be spent, you know, riding the rides and uh, not playing games so much. But, um, you know, it, just, a, you know, kind of a game place. It still was a game place up until the building's demolition, too. Like, it had, I don't remember what game it was exactly, but it had a laser maze thing in there mm -hmm. for a while. And then yeah. was it like one of those squirt racer things that was on the left side? 
Is yes, that am I remembering that correctly? Yeah, yeah, down and yeah, trigger the gun and squirt the thing and yeah. So they had that there, but you know the, the building for the cuddle up. I mean, it was in place, you know, and I'd walk by and you know I could remember the Dodge and being there and the cuddle up and you know the marquee marquees for both rides. You know, were brought over from Coney Island. They were attached to the to the building there. So there was a lot of memories with that. Every time I would go into the, the Coney Mall area of the park, you know, I would always have these flashbacks thinking about, you know, what it was like there from 72 to 76. Uh, but, you know, demolished after 2017, that was sad for me to see, um, you know, to make way for Coney barbecue for the 2018 season. But, uh, you know, I think we made good use of that space, right? With Coney barbecue. Yeah. I mean, uh, Honestly, the, the place was terribly underutilized uh, by the time it was demolished. Uh, you know, so when it closed, it had this place called The Rock Shop, which was King's Island's response to like a, a hot topic, I guess is the best way to put it. The shop was actually kind of cool. They had band posters and stuff, but who's going to buy a band poster at King's Island? You know, I think that was the problem because that's not really something you can walk around with all day. Um, I bought a belt there one time because I forgot to wear a belt. It was, this was on a KIC day, like when we had an event there, and I didn't want to walk around my pants. Yeah, I remember that shop, you know, going through, like you said, getting all the different, uh, you know, rock type shirts and things that were in there. And yeah, I mean, it was fun. It was one of those shops that was, it, it's a lot like Gatlinburg. It's fun to look. You wouldn't buy any of it. Um, so that shop, I've noticed, like in the last couple years of being open, wasn't always open. It'll be like kind of weekends only and then maybe open like at noon during the core season and not for, for lack of a reason. I think that it, it generated very little. Uh, we should probably mention since we're probably not going to do an episode on the rock shop. I guess we can um, we can go ahead and burn this one up. But it had an oxygen bar in the front for a little bit for like a season until they realized that intoxicating people by that means is probably not a great idea for Kings Island. Right. Today. Um, that was probably 2004 or so, maybe, maybe a little bit later than that, but sometime within that time period. Um, so that, so it had that shop and then it had, uh, toward the end, it had like a, like a laser thing where you've got to go through and not break the lasers. Uh, so it laser maze. And then to the left of that was a squirt them up kind of game. But Don, I've got a distinct memory from probably 30 years ago. I'm old. Um, where I remember doing virtual reality. Did they have like a kind of like an arcade there at some point? Well, the virtual reality was like closer to the midway, but it was, I think it was there. Like they set up shop in front of it or something. It was by it, yes. Yeah, okay. What I recall. Sometimes but, I ask uh, you, you know, questions just to make sure I'm not crazy. No, no, you're not crazy. But, you know, the cuddle up, you know, one of King's Island's most forgotten attractions. And I think that's because, you know, as popular as it was, but it was old, you know, so it was getting to that point where, you know, might have been hard to get parts in that port. But I, I think one of the reasons, again, you know, it only operated for five seasons. Yeah, but I think it goes down as one of the first rides to be removed in King's Island's history, too. Yeah, I guess it was uh, 1976, so a four-year-old ride. I guess that is kind of like, I, people probably had thoughts about that. Thank God there wasn't social media back then, but I bet everyone's thought was, well, they're going to replace all of the old Coney Island rides now after the first one, yeah. the, you know, the first domino fell after just a couple of years. Yeah, but like I said, it was old. Though. I mean, you got to remember 1930, you know, so by the time, you know, Kings Island opens, you know, it's almost a 50-year-old ride. It's 40-something years old, right? So, operated uh, just fine for 50 years until you got your grubby hands on it, Don, and then they had to take it out. No, we had fun. I mean, it, like I said, yeah. you know, uh, especially sometimes when we would have some of the, you know, uh, cousins would go with us to Kings Island or Coney Island. You know, it was always at Coney Island because my cousins always went with us there. And, you know, we would get in different ones. So we would, like, go past each other and things. And just, just a lot of fun when you're a kid. Absolutely. All right. So, Don... People like to cuddle up in these rides, or at least they like to at the time. But nowadays, they should cuddle up in a fine T-shirt. And the T-shirt I would recommend is uh, the official Tower Topics T-shirt. Don, tell us about this T-shirt. Well, we had a lot of our uh, listeners uh, asking if we had any kind of uh, you know merchandise, whether it was T-shirts, hats, uh, coffee mugs, uh, shot glasses, different things like that. So uh, we started out with t-shirts. We have, uh, you know, sold several of them and they're available for $22. That includes shipping. 
and you can send us a message, uh, you know, uh, direct message on our X account, which is tower underscore topics, or you can just reach out to Ryan and I directly and, you know, we'll, we'll get your size and um, the payment comes through Venmo and we'll get the shirt out to you quickly. But it, it's a really uh, nice shirt. It's a North Carolina blue color, uh, just very comfortable, you know, perfect shirt to wear in the summer. And, uh, you know, those wearing it, we appreciate the support for the show that you're showing by, by purchasing one of these shirts. A uh, listener question. This is from uh, Porter Redkey. He said, what is the best seat to ride in the racer and other KI coasters? Banshee, Diamondback, or Orion? If, the, if you don't have a specific seat you prefer, then is the front row or the back row the best for the ride? Don, what's your favorite ride, seat on the racer? Let's start with that. The racer, um, my favorite seat was always um, third from the back. So fifth car, first row. You know, they would call it, you know, if you're working in the ride, you would identify that as 51. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that was always my favorite place to ride on there. I think that or the second to the back seat are the two best places on the racer to ride. Now, one of the reasons, uh, you know, 51 became one of my favorite places to ride is, you know, back in the day when everybody would kind of bunch up in the station is everybody would go, you know, the front couple of cars. Everybody wanted to ride in the back seat or the second in the back seat, well, 51 was always kind of wide open. So I would just kind of slip in there and it just kind of grew on me. But as I rode in all the different seats, you know, many, many times, I just found that that was uh, the seat that that I liked the best in that ride or the second to the back. Uh, if you're talking about Banshee to me, I like the front seat. Front seat one. middle, because front seat middle for me. Yes, because yeah, the track exactly. coming overhead is a really cool visual. What about yeah, Diamond I like that. Diamondback, um, I like the back back seat, seat all, all day um, and same all thing day. with orion you know i think on any of those kind of b and m coasters when you have a nice nice drop of you know uh, diamondback you know you're going down you know 215 feet at that 74 degree angle of uh, you know orion 300 feet you know on the drop there uh the, you know there's nothing like getting you know pulled over the top and just you know coming down you know plummeting down that those drops so for me that would be the back seat on those two you you feel the same way on orion too ryan I do not. I, I, Orion, if I had to pick the best seat, it would be so facing, fa like sitting in the ride, you're all the way on the right side of the front row at night. And the reason why I say at night specifically, otherwise, probably the back for the reasons you listed. But when you get to the top of the hill and you start to crest on Orion, the coolest thing about it as a night ride is you often can't see the bottom of the hill just because of the way that the lights are placed and stuff. So that makes it kind of a front row ride for me. And then you go down the hill, you come up, you do that wave turn. Well, when you do the wave turn, if you're on the outside, then you get kind of this flinging sensation, kind of like the, you know, a, like a wing coaster, you know, mm -hmm. so you, you get flung to your side. So I think that's, that's really cool. So for Orion front row, right side for me. Okay. What about the beast? The beast, uh, I like the last row or the second last row. Those are my two favorite seats. I prefer the back seat, especially now that it's been retracked. Now there was yes. a time, you know, about a about a ten year period where riding over the wheels wasn't um, as much fun as it had been in the no. you know, from seventy nine to about nineteen ninety five. So I moved to the second of the back seat. But yeah, it's it's definitely for me. It's a back seat coaster. Um, the track work made it, you know, rewritable again there, you know, repeatedly rewritable like it had been, you know, for me throughout, you know, it's opening and, and through the eighties on that one. And uh, we'll go one more mystic timbers. Oh, back row. No, I, I take that back. So I I'm kind of torn about this because the first time I ever read mystic timbers, it was in the back row. Um, and I, I don't really like ejector air because it's, I find it uncomfortable to be slammed into the lap bar. So what I've come to find out is like two or three rows from the back, uh, you get a lot more floaty kind of stuff, a lot of less time in your seat rather than being forced up into the lap bar. So I, I really like that. If I had to choose front or back, that would be back. For me on Mystic Timbers, I like the front. Uh, yeah. I think, yes, yeah, the way it you know, just kind of rips through the course and that, I like being able to see the track in front of me as it's kind of, you know, going through so for me mystic timbers is, is front seat awesome cool yeah great question uh porter red key uh we've got another listener question this one is from kayla b so kayla b asks don what are you most looking forward to at the ace spring conference at king's island 
the A Spring Conference coming up uh, May 17th through the 19th. Uh, two things. Uh, number one is the the camaraderie, uh, reconnecting with a lot of, uh, you know, my friends that are in the American Coaster Enthusiasts, uh, you know, uh, a lot of people that I've met over the years. Uh, some of the ACE members, you know, we go back to 1981, you know, when I first became familiar with ACE. So seeing some of those people and, uh, you know, just reconnecting with old friends, meeting new friends, uh, really looking forward to that, doing the Beast Tour, uh, behind the scenes tour with that, I've, I've given you know, hundreds of beast tours, but to be able to just do that and not have to worry about where everybody's going and, and can just focus on getting, you know, some photos and just, just taking it in, you know, back there, uh, really looking forward to that. Now I had done beast tours before I started working at the park. They didn't do many of them back then because, mm -hmm. uh, it, it wasn't laid out where you had the, you know, the road and all those kind of things to be able to do that. So I'd maybe done two or three before I started working there, but, um, you know, those two things. And the, the final thing I'm looking forward to, and it was a big deal for me in the 1980s, was the uh, Ace Walk Back. And the 45th anniversary of that is going to be on the 19th. And um, looking forward to seeing how the park commemorates that. Uh, you know, I don't know anybody's at the park that was part of, you know, around back then when they used to do the Ace Walk Back and what that was all about. But um, just like to see how that gets commemorated. And I'm sure there's a lot of Ace members that remember the Ace Walk Back too. Uh, that would like to to see how that's going to be done. Yeah, it sounds like a pretty pretty exciting day. There's also the viewing of the Brady Bunch episode, Cincinnati Kids, mm -hmm. so you can kick back and what I guess the Kings Island Theater is where they're going to do that, and you can watch that. And uh, I'm not saying there's going to be a special appearance by the Brady Bunch, but I would say that if they were going to really wow them, that's the way to do it. There's not going to yeah, be but, but you know, I mean, <laughs> you think about these different events, and you know, uh, the ERTs. You know that's great to get that exclusive ride time you know nighttime on the beast and you know your rides on diamondback and orion those kind of things are, are great but at the end of the day what you what you remember the most uh is is the camaraderie just you know connecting with like-minded individuals and, and just having fun um you know w with your friends you know riding your favorite rides and that so that that's what it's really all about for me is just just the camaraderie piece of it that's the most important part yeah I would say, I would say it is. So that's really cool. Hey, thanks for the question, Kayla. And hopefully uh, I won't be at the spring conference, but Don will and hope, come up and say hi to him. He loves his fans, but yeah, <laughs> I'm Ryan, sir, along with Don Helbig. And this is Tower Topic.